Hello students, this is part two of our lecture, the application of metacognitive strategies in the local school system. Again, I am Ms. Patricia E. Robinson, attached to the Center for Education Programs in the Department of Psychology at the University of Trinidad and Tobago current campus. Now in part one, we saw the importance of maintaining attention and the need to teach children how to attend along with the activities that can be used. Additionally, we looked at the factors that we must consider to enhance our information processing, one being Pyveo's dual code theory and the other Baddeley's loop. Today, I intend to take you a few steps further as we understand the whole concept of metacognition. So we are going to look now at meta-memory, meta-memory. Let's define helping students to gain knowledge and control over their memory. And gaining control over our memories is extremely important because it seems as though it fails us just when we need it. However, in order to gain control of our memory, when interacting with material, students must know how to do certain things. And let's see what they need to do. They need to learn how to make information meaningful. Now, what do we understand by the term meaningfulness? This is the extent to which information in our long-term memory can be connected with other information. So we are really looking for interconnections. And in order for us to make these connections, the information that we are processing must be clear and well understood so that we can find meaning from it. Now, in order for us to have meaningfulness, we must have a few strategies. Let's look at one, organization. The information must be organized. And when we talk about organization, we are talking about clustering or categorizing. Let's think about our computer and all those files that we have on our desktop. That is an example of clustering or organization. Now, I withheld the slide because I want to show you a picture of my brain, how well it's organized. Do you see that? Yes, that's a picture of my brain, well organized. And there's nothing wrong with one showing off a little, okay? All right, so just remember that's how inside of Miss Robinson's brain looks. Anyhow, this is what we're talking about when we are talking about organization. So moving along, now that you have looked at my brain sufficiently, let's talk a little about, about this organization, other ways that we can organize. Look at this, creating charts and matrices. So when you're studying, make charts, make matrices. Don't only use the little scrappy notes. Remember the problem with scrappy notes according to Baddeley's theory, all right? Make models and outlines. We are dealing with information processing. Make a model, make an outline, you see? So that we, we get visual information along with the verbals. Now, let's move on. We need to elaborate. Elaboration is another fantastic strategy in our metacognitive processes. It allows us to make connections with those well-organized clusters that I presented earlier, all right? Um, it enhances items that need to be remembered with extra information. Now, let's take an example from Egan and Kauchak. The circulatory system can be likened unto a pump that carries blood around our bodies. We can look at the veins and the arteries as pipes, and this heart being a pump. So if we are talking about, you know, the circulatory system, we allow our students to think about a pumping system that operates at their home or so, so that they can make a link. Other techniques that are available to us are mnemonics. And usually, mnemonics help us to make links with information that is not even within the content. but it's important because it allows us to um, recall factual knowledge. Look at this, the colors of this rainbow here. It's really, really hard for you to say, okay, the colors of the rainbow are red, and you have to remember red, 
and orange and yellow ooh, and green and blue and indigo and violet when we can just use a mnemonic and say the first letter method or an acronym Roy G. Biff red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet so all you're walking into the room with would be Roy G. Biv once you know the colors of the rainbow Roy G. Biv will trigger that information for those who are musically minded we want to learn the notes on the lines of the treble clef E G B D F. wow every good boy deserves favor so these are little schemes should i say that we can use to enhance our information processing now we have many more examples however i have decided that i am going to allow you to research them and create a mnemonic cluster in your brain so that when you are ready to use them you can go to that file pull them out and work on them let's look at another the conducting of frequent reviews this allows for schema activation all right, of information from the long term to the working memory. So all that information that we have in the long term memory, when we activate those and we bring them back to the working memory, it facilitates our assessment of our learning. We, we can look at our links and keep them fresh in the brain. So we need to encourage ourselves and our students to ask themselves questions. What are the association between these topics? How is this information different from my previous knowledge? So we are just not reading, but we are reading and asking ourselves questions. We move now to meta comprehension. Our thoughts about comprehension. You know, usually we overestimate our understanding. Once the, 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 the literature or the scrap notes or the matrices and the outlines are in front of us, we know our work, you know, right? But as teachers, we must check students perceptions of information via questioning okay they because of this overestimation of their understanding so as i said check their perception encourage them to read wait a few minutes summarize what they read make outlines and summarize materials and it is important that they do these things in their own words all right And finally, we talk about the need to model metacognition. Teachers, you need to model metacognition. Think aloud. While working at a task, think about it and allow the students to observe how you are thinking about it so that they too can incorporate these schemes into their information processing. All right? So as I did previously, I'm going to ask you to please review the question. Is it possible to use these metacognitive strategies in the classroom given the press to prepare learners for standard one for CC exam? Again, I say thank you for listening attentively and I know that you processed the information presented using your metacognitive strategies. So goodbye and all the best.